If there's one thing you should take away from any of my videos ever, it's that no matter how big a project is and no matter what you're working on, popsicle sticks can still be useful. I believe how perfect that fit. Dude, no matter how big your project is, craft sticks are the answer. Always, always. Certainly it wouldn't be a Rocket Vlogs video without a little bit more sanding. The bulk plates had a little bit of overhang, so Taylor just cleaned it up so it'll fit in the tube. If we put it together? No, you can't. We, I guarantee you we can't put it together standing up. Yeah. So, it, all right, you have to bring her down more. All right, you go up. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's a 12 inch Punisher. <laughs> let me just, uh, let me just keep walking till it fits. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me get some of this sand. Uh, you think we need more? Probably. <laughs> Probably wouldn't hurt. Another successful test fit means it's time to glue the bottom coupler into the fin can. Just one less piece that has to come apart for transport. This gives you a good opportunity though to see how the all thread holds the whole thing together once the coupler is in. With epoxy drying we decided to test out our slow release drogue idea. Basically it's like a riser on an actual skydiving rig because Bryce flew one of these same parachutes as a drogue on Porthos and unfortunately shredded it upon Apogee deployment. As you can see, Matt's not quite fast enough to put it to the test. Well, Joy, you're never going to believe it, but it's time for some sanding. Just like with the regular rocket, we sanded and prepped these fields and did them just like we would with any other rocket, except for the fact that it used basically an entire quart of West Systems Epoxy just to do the fillets on this rocket. As with any other rocket, once the fillets were dry, we sanded them. However, instead of sanding them to perfect shape like I usually would, instead we're just pack prepping them because we're preparing it for a 9.5 ounce glass tip to tip layer. Remember how we marked the centering rings? Well, that's going to come into play now. Like I said earlier, a countersunk wood screw is going into the rings, however, this side happens to be the rail button side, so there's two countersunk wood screws and then two spots where we'll be putting in inserts to mount the massive unistrut rail buttons. I have to say, doing tip-to-tip -tip glass on a huge rocket is really easy compared to doing it on some smaller ones, so if you're looking to get into fiberglassing, I highly recommend using an entire paycheck to build a 12-inch rocket so that you have a nice and easy first time fiberglassing something. Matt was allowed to come play again for a few hours. He's got to be yeah. home by eight. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Give me the old, the old hearing. Boop. Here you can see me mounting our massive ejection wells. They're one and a half inch pieces of PVC pipe end caps. Here you can see Taylor sanding up the edge of the tube so it's as square as we can possibly get it. And I warn you ahead of time, I'm about to cut to some pretty satisfying footage. Yes, we also countersunk the screws that hold the electronics bay into the upper section. Here you can see Matt is cutting out all of our shot cord and measuring everything because we're getting ready to ground test it. Now, as you might imagine, with a really big rocket comes some really big charges. On the drogue side, we calculated it out to about 15 grams, and on the nose cone side, we did 18. So, what's that look like? Oh, what day did I get it here? Friday? Yeah, so he came Saturday. And that's when you had the day old Brahms. Yeah. It's Wednesday now. And I, I, I've been I've been doing pretty good. Five day old Brahms? Wait, it's, yeah, okay, there's a sesame seeds and not mold. <laughs> good start. I mean you know it's not McDonald's, like it's not preservative <laughs> burger. It might still be. It's still alright. <laughs> it's all good. 
I did once see Matt eat a completely raw steak because he thought he wanted it rare. Oh yeah. That was, that Turns out it was just. Oh wait, no, it was a frozen. It was a frozen steak he thought was cooked rare, and like someone would cook a steak and freeze it, but uh, it was just raw, and he just ate it. Raw. Yeah. And it was good. Yeah. Wow, what an epic shot. I just thought I'd jump in here and tell you guys uh, because you'll be able to see it but didn't get any footage of it because I was running out of space on the SD card. Uh, we added another layer of carbon fiber using the comb foot out as a template just to reinforce the foam a little bit more. They're extremely rigid as you're about to see. All right, back to this epicness. Just a quick rundown of what we got going on here before we ground test it. There's two, what is that, 632? 632. Two 632 shear pins. We got two 1024. This is all the way around, by the way. So there's six 632 shear pins and six 1024 with weld nut backing holding the pieces together that don't come apart. Six 632 shear pins up here as well. 15 gram charge in the bottom, 18 gram 18 in the nose. The, we just weighed it, it's 107 pounds with all the recovery gear as it sits. So And we were estimating 120. 120-ish. So we got 13 pounds of wiggle room on all the filler on the fin can and paint. Which seems, seems reasonable. Yeah, but everything adds up so fast. It's a lot of surface area for paint. Rogue test. Yep. 15 grams of black powder. You ready? Yeah. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. One. <laughs> okay. You ready? 18 grams. Main charge. You ready? Yeah. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. With that, all there was left to do was put a ton of epoxy filler with a ton of micro balloons all over the fins so that they could be sanded smooth and prepared for paint. Well guys, that's, that's a 12 inch Punisher. Unfortunately, I've gotta go home and the timing is just tragic because as much as I know you guys love the sanding channel content, this would be the ultimate sanding channel. Huh? Yeah, yeah it would. So, the nice simple part of building a rock and just sanding and finishing <laughs> it is up to Taylor and maybe Matt now. Mm, yeah, we'll see if Matt makes it back up. But Yeah, I mean, yeah. thanks for leaving me with the sanding. <laughs> yeah, no problem. But I have to uh, drive 1400 miles home now. I haven't been home for three and a half weeks, so I should probably go home. I mean, I, I've been washing my clothes though, it's like really I don't need to I guess, but I got a band practice and a show and everything like that, but as unfortunate as it is that we don't get to bring you a completely finished 12 inch Punisher in this video series, uh, it does give me a chance to tell you guys that we're flying this at Airfest. Should we for the people that actually stick around the end tell them the motors? I guess so. It's on Patreon already, so, but it, these people stuck around, especially 
the Patreon people who actually already know, but if they watch this whole like documentary thing that I'm about to make, um, they deserve to know if they don't already. And if you watched however many parts this is and watched all the way to the very <laughs> end of that as well, you deserve to know that it's flying at Airfest on an M2500, three L1520s, and three K1000s. So, all lit on the ground. All blue thunder, 75, 675s, and 98. It's what, 10,000 feet, Mach 0.95 or something. Almost 3,000 pounds of thrust, I think. The weight doesn't change too much, which I don't think it will. It's gonna be close to 20 to one thrust to weight. That's dumb. She's gonna punish. <laughs> that's like that's like a three inch on a K1275. Is it? Does it only do 20? K700 maybe? Yeah, sixteen. I don't know. Maybe maybe mine's twenty to one because mine weighs like four more. I pounds. feel like a J eight hundred. Yeah. Anyway, it's gonna be quick. Yeah, it's but a twelve inch rocket is gonna move out very fast. So if you're not planning on coming to Airfest and you live anywhere near Argonia, keep in mind a couple things. One, this is flying, and two, I live twenty three hours away from Airfest and I drive pretty much every year. So it's worth it. I promise. If not for this, it's just a great launch. So, uh, yeah, come to Airfest. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around at the end of this. It's been a lot of fun. I still can't believe the majority of this rocket was built in a day. Yeah. Like, the whole fin can was done in a day. Not including tip to tip or the carbon or anything, but... Yeah, the entire fin can was built in one day. That's nuts. I mean, I did have all the parts cut, but... Right, yeah, so... Anyway, I guess uh, one last thank you, even though I'm running at the beginning. So first of all, thank you for building all the parts ahead of time so we could just put it together like a kit. And thank you so much, Tim and Jackie and everybody else at Wildman for hooking us up because this would not have been possible without their help. But it, it's uh, they gave us a bunch of help with getting the parts and getting all this stuff together. So uh, And of course, Tim's expertise. He's done several rockets this size and people that have been giving us input on stuff like this. And uh, yeah. It's going to be a good learning curve, but hopefully everything just goes nice and smooth and we get to fly this thing as many times as Porthos flew. Yeah. And we're going to have to catch up because Bryce is going to keep flying it. Is he? I think so. Yeah, the plan is to keep, make this a, a workhorse 12 inch rocket and yeah. not, not a one and done. Just, you know, just one That's the, Lots of people have built big rockets, but few people have built big rockets that have flown many times. Yeah, we wanted to fly like a regular, our other Punishers. Yeah. Yours is, how many flights are on your 3-inch one? Like 25 now? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> it's, you know, $3,000 a flight for this one, but who's counting? So, speaking of which, patreon.com slash rocketvlogs. If you want to help out with the channel, we have merch available all the time at rocketvlogs.com. I'm probably going to do another limited drop here soon if you don't want any of the stuff that's just regularly available. If you don't want to give me money, that's fine, but you still want to support the channel, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and, uh, yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Boom. Now, do we secretly tell these people that they get this little cutscene at the end about the double?